Welcome back everyone, Jake here. In this video, I want to talk about the Eastern Orthodox Church of Russia because yesterday was Easter Sunday. Despite the fact that a war is going on, Ukrainians celebrated Orthodox Easter across the country. I'll link this article down below if you want to look at some of these powerful and moving images of Ukrainians choosing to practice their faith basically in the ruins of their places of worship. The Russian military has been particularly devastating and deliberately targeting Eastern Orthodox churches to destroy in Russia. They're also destroying synagogues, destroying mosques, pretty much any place of worship. And despite the fact that their churches have been bombed, uh, Ukrainian Christians chose to come out anyways to observe and celebrate and practice their faith. Now in this video I am going to be talking about the Eastern Orthodox Church and I don't want to sound ignorant or intolerant. I've done my best to understand the basics and I just want to share that basic information with you. And what I know about the Eastern Orthodox uh, collection of churches is it's not like Catholicism where there's one guy at the top the Pope, who then gives direction or guidance down to cardinals and bishops. The Eastern Orthodox Church is more like Protestantism, where there are differences ever so slightly between the different churches. And more than often, these churches have almost geographical boundaries. And sometimes these geographical boundaries uh, are just countries. So you'll notice that this church right here is under the Patriarch of uh, Bulgaria. Uh, this is Bulgaria, and this one is under the Patriarch of Romania. But sometimes there's overlap when you see these shaded regions, shaded regions down here. And sometimes this giant tan blob up here, this is under the Patriarch of Russia or the Patriarch of Moscow. This includes the Baltic states, Belarus, and Ukraine. So the Patriarch of Moscow uh, is basically uh, the largest amongst all of these patriarchs with territory under his jurisdiction and parishioners that belong to his church. So I'm sure that this matters to the Patriarch of Moscow to have geographical control over the worshipers, the Christians, the parishioners, whatever you want to call them, within the country of Ukraine. However, when Russia invaded Ukraine in 2014, this caused tension within the church, and Eastern Orthodox members inside of Ukraine wanted to form their own church. And this is exactly what happened with the creation of the Orthodox Church of Ukraine. This church was united uh, at this council on 15 December, 2018, <clears throat> and it was recognized by the Ecumenical Patriarch of Constantinople. The, the Patriarch of Constantinople is not like the Pope, but he's, I guess, the only one that can recognize a new church. So what Ukraine wants is exactly what Bulgaria and Romania have. They want their own Eastern Orthodox Church separate from the Patriarch of Moscow. This event, in 2018, led to the 2018 Moscow-Constantinople Schism because the Patriarch of uh, Constantinople, recognizing that Ukraine could have their own Eastern Orthodox Church separate from Russia, infuriated both Vladimir Putin and the Patriarch of Moscow. And this doesn't take a strategist to figure out why, this is less territory, less parishioners, uh, less souls that he is guiding and in charge of. So in previous videos, I've not really commented on the Patriarch of Moscow. I wanted to learn a little bit more about him, but I don't really need to know more than just he's a close ally of Russian leader Vladimir Putin. Kirill has described Putin's rule as a miracle of God. According to Putin, Kirill uh, Kirill's father baptized him. Okay. During his tenure as Patriarch of Moscow, 
uh, he's brought the Russian Orthodox Church closer to the Russian state. So what you need to know is that when this guy took control of the church in February of 2019, both Kirill and Putin have been very deliberate about merging religious and state functions to intertwine the two so that they are basically one and the same with their objectives. And this causes a lot of concern for uh, people who favor religious freedom because when religion controls the state, this is not good for religious minorities if there are Jews and Muslims and Mormons or whoever also in inside the country. But for political reasons, this is also alarming given Kirill's background. Forbes reported uh, in February of 2019 that Kirill, as well as his predecessor, Alexei II, uh, they're, they're former KGB agents. They're not KGB informants like millions of people in the old Soviet Union were. They were KGB agents, uh, exactly the same as Vladimir Putin. So as an outsider looking in on the Russian church, this gives me concern. This gives me uh, caution that the the religious the the religious uh, church and the state are both run by former Soviet KGB agents. So this, in my opinion, why members maybe in the Baltic states or Eastern Orthodox members in Ukraine, they don't want to take guidance, religious guidance from the Patriarch of Moscow, given that's his background. This clip I want to show you guys is from Sky News, Ukraine war split in Russian Orthodox Church. And uh, this, we'll just, we'll just start the clip and we'll stop it after about 30 seconds. Most non-state media outlets in Russia have been banned but not Zagreb TV, which blends just the kind of patriotic, conservative, orthodox values which underpin Putin's regime. The Pope has criticized what is happening in Ukraine. Its wealthy founder, Konstantin Malofeyev, has been under US and EU sanctions since 2014 for supposedly funding the separatists in Donbass. I uh, can easily survive with Western sanctions. Unashamedly imperial. So all, ind all independent television stations and media sources have been shut down in Russia. All information that the Russian public is consuming comes directly from the Kremlin propaganda machine. But the Kremlin likes this guy uh, who runs this religious television station inside of uh, Russia. He's also called Russia's offensive in Ukraine a holy war. Yeah and he promotes all the main talking points of the Kremlin's propaganda. So where does this end, this special military operation? You said it would be a matter of days. It's when been much longer than that. When you would stop to support Nazis, when you in Britain would uh, stop to support Nazi regime in Kiev. Obviously, the... U so that's all he's got to say. Uh, this war will end uh, when you stop supporting Nazis. That's, that's, his, that's his argument. Now... On his television station, he said that this war would only take a couple days, that this was a holy war and uh, the Ukrainians were going to view Russian forces as liberators, overthrow their Nazi governments. But the reason why this war is taking now two months is because the West, Great Britain and America, is supplying military weapons to those Nazis in Kiev. UK and I'm not the British government, but the UK would say, we do not support uh, Nazis in Ukraine. It is why. The tiny number of them. It and is And also, why. the Kiev regime is not a Nazi regime, so... No, it's not, obviously. It's obviously only for you and for Western propaganda. So Russia will keep fighting in Ukraine until the flow of weapons stops? This is part of our territory. We are divided people, and we were divided in 1991 as Germans were divided after the war. Uh, when we were defeated in Cold War, we were divided for Russian Federation and Ukraine, but we are one people. We have one history, we have one blood, we are the family. There are so many lies and mis misinformation in that one sentence from that guy. So first of all, he mentions that they're a divided people 
after the Soviet Union collapsed, they were one and the same, split in two, uh, just like West Germany and East Germany. Let's get over the hypocrisy that it was uh, the Soviets who divided the Germans between West and East, but now he's claiming that Russia is the victim and that Ukraine doesn't exist. It's all been part of Russia, always been Russia. But this just contradicts the facts and history. So here is a map of Europe after World War, uh, World War I. And Ukraine, as an independent country, existed between 1917 and 1920. It was only in 1919 when the Soviets, the Russians, invaded their country, toppled their government, uh, and then over the 1920s and 1930s basically killed millions of Ukraine, Ukrainians. Joseph Stalin was particularly brutal to stomp out Ukrainian identity, Ukrainian nationalism. Uh, this has been the line for over a hundred years that Ukraine doesn't exist. You are Russian. You have always been Russian. And Russia likes to always uh, prop up this narrative of the Kievan Rus going back 900 years. I googled the maps and yes, Kiev is right here part of the Kievan Rus, but you'll notice that a majority of Ukraine, including Crimea and the Donbass region, is not on the map for the Kievan Rus, so uh, geographically not helping their claim. Here's the, the Kievan Rus 100 years later, between 1220 and 1240, and it's the Mongols, it's the Golden Horde controlling Donbass, Odessa, Crimea, Mariupol, not the Kievan Rus. I'm just nitpicking here. I'm basically trolling anybody watching this who supports Russia. But look at this meme. Uh, the city of Kiev has thousands of years of history going back to the Roman Empire and more recently the Byzantine Empire. So Kiev was a uh, thriving metropolitan city in 996 before Moscow was even formed, before Moscow even existed. There are churches in Kyiv uh, contributing to their history, their culture, their national identity that date back over a thousand years. So when the Soviet Union collapsed, uh, all of the uh, republics with inside the USSR were given a vote, a referendum to declare their independence. So this is the 1991 Ukrainian independence results and 28,804,000 people voted yes to be independent as their own country, separate from Russia. And it even got a majority of the votes in the South, uh, in the Donbass region, and in Crimea. It was still over 50%. These election results, you know, uh, only 7.7 7, uh, wanted to stay. So this narrative put out by uh, Russian propaganda that they're one people, one language, one religion, one national identity is just false. So let's watch a little bit more of this news clip. The channel is watched mostly by the Orthodox faithful, but it's useful for the Kremlin. A new branch just opened in Kherson, Ukraine, after Russian forces occupied the city and took over its airwaves. Zagreb TV is a good illustration of the Christian nationalism that Vladimir Putin has made a central part of his rule. This notion of a Russian world where Belarus and Ukraine aren't sovereign entities at all, a political idea which the Russian Orthodox Church and its patriarch Kirill have pushed with religious fervor. <laughs> The Patriarch's support for the war effort has resulted in calls for the Russian Orthodox Church to be expelled from the World Council of Churches. And despite the threat of prosecution, even some priests within Russia are speaking out. So the Eastern Orthodox Church of Russia is about to be expelled from the World Council of Churches for supporting the invasion of Ukraine. Того, 
иноплеменные какие-то враги развязали эту войну. То есть это перевод. So this is a religious leader within the Eastern Orthodox Russian Church speaking out because he's being mandated by the Patriarch of Moscow, Kirill, to have his parishioners recite a prayer, basically saying the war is the West's fault. So they're infusing national politics into mandatory sermons, mandatory prayers. Uh, and I think this guy is just having a realization on camera that his church is corrupt. His church uh, is in favor of war, in favor of bombing churches in Ukraine for daring to break away, daring to be independent, daring to have their own identity. And ultimately, this war on Ukraine by Russia is ethnic genocide. Here's an article about Russia has ordered any mentions of Ukraine and Kyiv to be removed from textbooks. Higher-ups at one of Russia's oldest publishers ordered employees to erase all references to Ukraine and Kyiv from their textbooks. This is classic Ministry of Truth from George Orwell's 1984. Basically, you, you, you reach a certain point in the present where, uh, based on what's happening today, past facts contradict your narrative today, so the past has to be rewritten, re, uh, reimagined, erased, whatever you want to call it. So Russia is a fascist state. Uh, Vladimir Putin rules it exclusively, and it's a contradiction. It's, it's a calamity. It's a disaster for people that wake up in their country and realize that Vladimir Putin is a, is a tyrant, He's a thug, he's basically a mob boss, and they're committing, they're committing genocide in Ukraine. Final thing I want to say about <clears throat> claiming that territory that was once yours should belong to you again, this is a very dangerous narrative that I think a lot of countries fall prey to. As an American, I can't say that I'm any better or, or, or my own government hasn't made uh, terrible actions in the past. But as a case in point, let's just look at the Ottoman Empire. This was their empire as recent as 220 years ago. This is 1798. And to say that we are one and the same people, we were divided unfairly, I have the right to invade you and force you to be part of me again. What Russia is doing to Ukraine is the equivalent of modern-day Turkey invading Greece and telling Greece, you don't exist. You're, you're Turks. You've always been part of Turkey. Your separate religion, separate language, separate history doesn't exist. And we're going to use our superior military to uh, subjugate you again, bring you back in so we can become a whole and happy family. Same thing if Turkey were to invade Serbia and tell the Serbs your language, your history, doesn't exist. You're, you're a Turk. Always were a Turk. Look at this map to prove it. That's all for this update video. If you found it informative, give me a thumbs up so the algorithm knows it's good. If you know something I don't or want to correct me, let me know in a comment down below. I love hearing from you guys. Till the next video, take care, be safe.